want it, I guess, is my question. Just is it because we've been going pretty. Yeah, we've been oh, yeah, meeting. afterward will be key signing. Key signing. Yeah, so, so there's just, not another talk after this, right. so it should. Okay. We should be meeting. able to. I'm, I'm, okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to. Um, I, I always keep uh, keep an eye on time. I like to I like to do things on time. Yeah, that's true too. Okay, that works too. Okay. Okay. You all set. I mean, uh, when we have a mix of crowds here. I mean, I'm going to be talking about Maltics. I'll be showing off Maltics to a bunch of Malticians and a, lot, a number of students who have probably never seen it. Um, in some ways, Maltics is, uh, you know, you go to a, a, mul you know, a bunch of Malticians and it's sort of like a Jedi convention. I mean, you have all these old men with beards, uh, maybe they're not wearing Jedi robes, but they're talking about it, about Maltics. And I, I, people ask me how I came to MIT with Maltics experience. And as I was, a, I had the privilege of going to an Explorer post in Washington, D.C., where we had Maltics access to the system development system, System M, for those of the Malticians who know it. And we just had it after hours, once a week. We got to talk to some people, experts. We got to log in after hours during the whole week. So we really got to really experience it. But Maltics was, was one of the few operating systems that was actually designed, I mean, f to do sort of what it was supposed to do. I mean, y Unix was, was designed too, but then it grew way beyond what it was attempted to do. Windows, Windows came from DOS, okay? They had to maintain <laughs> cap, cap, compatibility with all of it. 360, the same thing. You know, things just grew and grew. Multics was, in large part, an academic exercise. It was a second system, so it had a lot of se second system effects. But there was a real, um, real drive to keep things consistent, to try to keep things elegant. And, you know, I mean, if you talk about, probably, you know, the people who were around in those days about the designers, how, how, you know, that reflected the designers and the like. So you're, you're going to see this in action. So I, um, you know, a year ago, I set up on F XVM the um, Multics, a Multics simulator. Um, kudos to whoever did it out in the world because, I mean, I, I, any, a lot of us thought about this. And Multics, you know, might have been an elegant system, but there was a lot of complexity, especially to the hardware, multiple processors. Exactly. It, it was. It was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Because we were dealing with. They were dealing with uh, things. So here we are. Um, let me connect in. First thing you see is you get a uh, login screen. Uh, you don't just get a username prompt. You, you see that you can go in and you can even say help. And it's going to even tell you how to log in. So you can just say login space, um, log in there, and type in a password, and there we go. And you hear, hear a ready screen that's sort of like the prompt. One of the first things you see is I've already used up six cents of, of computer <laughs> times, OK? And uh, if I start something up like Emacs, um, what kind of terminal do I have? VT100. Uh, go back 17 cents. So I used 11 cents just starting up Emacs. Now, we have in front of us Bernie Greenberg, who wrote Multics Emacs. It was the first Emacs to be written in Lisp. Um, which he wrote. Okay, I guess he wrote the, the list. Oh, okay. After a while. So, in some ways, you know, Multics, you know, Unix came out of, came from the, you know, people who were in the Multics project, projects. So, some of the things you see in Multics, you know, if you're coming in from a Unix command line, there would be some similarities. You know, you have list, you have PWD, you have some things. And you know you have you know Emacs uh, there. Um, hmm? That's correct. Right, right. They could spell. You could do list, 
Um, and every command had, um, let's see if I remember it, PWD was, was print working to her? Ah, oh, okay, good. Uh, yes? Uh, yeah, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll get through this. Uh, if, I, if, I, if I go too much out of order, I think we're, I'm going to lose some people. So uh, print underscore w dir. But there was a very, there was a very consistent way of, of doing things. I mean, the, the nomenclature was very um, standard. You had short, every command, most commands had a long name like list, short name like ls. Yes. Right. Right. So you know, you you had things, other things that that you know, from a familiarity standpoint, you didn't have ed or ex. You had something called quetix. Um, okay. And so uh, in VI, yeah, you'd get colon, you can read a startup.ec, one to call, uh, one call done, so D, uh, you can quit, you know. So some of the things are familiar. One thing that you will get caught up on a little bit is it's C, when, when you have PWD, to change your working directory, it's CWD, it's not CD. I, I, I Unix wanted to save letters all over the place, so they made CD, uh, made CWD into CD, uh, and on Multic CD means create directory. So uh, it, it was um, a little bit of an issue there. Let me get my notes so I can do that. So here we have a path name, um, and um, here in the file system, instead of using slashes, they used greater thans. Um, and one of the nice things you had with uh, greater thans is to go, a, to go to a parent directory, you just did a less than sign. You didn't have pipes, and um, you, so you could find out that you were in UD, user dir dir recipient min, you could take a look at uh, the directories that we had. Um, you have this concept of add names, um, you know, here we have um, Rockless over there, John on, on this machine, and he's saying hello using uh, the message command that I guess maybe you helped write or something like that. Send message. Send message, yeah. He wrote that one night. Yeah, he wrote that. So, so uh, Bob Frankston over there. So add. He wrote it. So when people, when people run for office saying they invented email, don't believe them. So, um, right. Yep. Right, right. Right, right. Yeah. So, we got, a, we got a big peanut gallery. We're going to try to go through a little bit of this. So now I add a name JR to Rockless, so I can just CWD to JR, and here I am. Don't know if, I guess I have access to uh, what he has. He, uh, John has a mailbox there, a value there. Um, and the other thing about it, but I don't have any access. I don't have any access to this because Multics had access control lists. Way before before Unix uh, even thought of it no, in terms of uh, well, you had access control lists. We have rings. I, I don't want to. I'm not going to go. Th I'll go through the rings in a, in a little bit. Okay. Well, some some do in its own way, but um, but here when you see that. Uh, Whenever you list something, one of the things you see is what your access is. These are directories. You have SMA, status, modify, append. Um, I'm a project administrator here, so I really have uh, access to all these subdirectories. Uh, I go into my directory, and I see that I have read, execute, write, just like in Unix, but it basically just shows you what your effective access is to things, and you can very easily look at any of these files, LA or list ACL, however you want to uh, type it. You know, um, multiple names. Um, right. 
Um, and, uh, and so here you see read write to zanarati.sipi admin, uh, read write to star.sys daemon. I believe Multics was the first daemon. Did, they, yeah. did we have yeah. the first daemons? And it's spelled correctly with the A-E. Oh, okay. No, okay. Um, uh -huh. Okay, yes. I mean, Multics was very, it was, everything was case sensitive. Usernames, everything, file names. Uh, that, that was a little bit of, a, uh, of an issue. One thing, and here you see my identity is both Xanarati and, and Sippy admin. Huh? Multics is better than underscore. Oh, right. <laughs> yes. Multics make big use of the underscores, and when we get to the programming side, uh, we'll see, see a little bit of it. Um, and, uh, but that meant that's a project. And when I logged in, Sippy admin was my default project because projects came in with, re, through, the resources came in through projects. So that, I'm, that 49 cents is being, you know, charged through pro, the Sippy admin project. And um, you, you could log in as a user to multiple projects. I mean, for instance, I can do this. I can do a log out dash hold. Um, I can log in, back in. And I could log in at, you know, let's see, student TZ, if I did my student ID. Um, what is 90 huh? What is, what is six, out of six people out of 90, essentially. I mean, if I do a who, I can see who's logged in. I knew this was about the capacity of the domain. Yeah. So this is a really big computer he's logged into. Oh, yeah. Yes, this is like a mainframe. It's powerful as my phone. Yes. <laughs> So, so, it's also, they also system that we gave all those accounts on our edge. I think Fermer had, what, 384K words or something? Yeah, you really had to say what they were. I don't mind if it was a good one. Three megabytes. Yeah. Whoa. Also, this is all about the process. Yes, I'll I, I get to okay, the process stuff. That's, 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 he's, he, he, he's, he's getting to where, where I am. I just wanted to show that I'm in a different home directory when I log in as student TZ. These were the student accounts that we gave out for, you know, for the, you know any MIT student, when I got to SIPI, could get a student account, get about $50 or $100 worth of things and keep it in. You know, if you happen to be a SIPI admin, maybe you put your SIPI admin file, your SIPI files in one place, maybe your personal, you know, you know personal student stuff in, a, in another place. I'm going to log out again and go back to... Um, now, was this restored from a backup, or did you just happen to create the structure similar to what MIT used? I created the structure similar to what MIT did, yeah. We, I don't know if we have any backups of, of sorts. Um, I have, in my storage closet, I have huge boxes of printouts of Multic stuff, but I don't have the key to it, so I haven't broken the lock yet to, to, <laughs> to type in some of my old programs. So printouts are probably the best way to, uh, to restore things, to keep things sometimes. Um, but as Bernie said, these are heavy duty processes. I mean, one of the things that Unix did is had many, had tried to make lightweight processes. But when I log in, I get one process here. Yeah, I did create a library. Well, yeah, later on, later on, but you know, I only, it, it was, I, I can't say I actually used it, but most users, you got one process, and you know, if you if you needed a new one, you could do new new process, and it creates again. And you see, it takes seven seconds, seven cents of CPU time just to create a new process. You can't you can't have every command you do create a new process. List takes a cent. Um, so everything, what a commands when you run a command, you're calling a subroutine, and every it was very heavy duty. But it all worked out because you had the protection of the segmented memory architecture. And you know, the, the idea in Multics was that these, these, um, these, um, these, these aren't files. These are segments. These are portions of memory. And you had, 
so you you call you do list you 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 will you will um, be doing the list. I could do call ls and it does the same thing. Um, so think of it as just running in one process. And uh, these commands, you had not only um, commands, instead of using the output of, of things for the command, you had these things called active functions. So I could do, a, um, I could do the WD, which would print out the, the working directory. You know, I could CD to, to greater than, I could do a LS. Um, you had UDD, user di directory directories, um, which is... These names. Yeah, these are the ad names. I, I mentioned it. It's just, it's sort of like, these aren't symlinks. I mean, Multics has symlinks, and you can make use of that. Uh, but these are names that are kept together, are listed together, and you know, it's a, it's a good way to save you on typing. Uh, instead of having to type system library standard, you could go to SSS. Um, and so if you wanted to go back to your home directory, you could use as a um, active function your home directory. Um, and this, this is calling this command in such a way that you make use of the return argument because commands are like subroutines. And that's when you use active functions. So simply, simply created a library of active functions. Okay. And that we made use of, you know, I mean, I could do a CD, WDD, UDD, and I say user project, which is my user project, which would be SIPI admin, and then user uh, name, which would be Zanarati, uh, CD there, and there I am there. So that's sort of, these things were designed to um, you know to be to be returned and used in a program, as opposed to you know that way you didn't have to really try to mangle the output to simplify things. In Unix, they did that. You know, they, multi, the Unix list would never have this kind of format with all this extraneous output because the the original idea for Unix was to take the ls command and pipe it into someplace else. In Multics, you, you run the ls as interactive command, you get this. If you had a, the equivalent um, of uh, in an active function, um, you, you could use another thing like entry entries, um, a str oh, it's string, not string. Yeah, the command, the command for tell it, they will be run function and yeah, change. Yeah. Right. They were different multics because they realized it didn't work. You people didn't care that they can't have it. Right. Um, so one of the other nice things is where to sh show you that this is a process. Let me go to um, the, the the process directory. PD. Um, when you logged in, you got a process directory, and this is you, this is a temporary folder that is just your you. The access on it is restricted, I, I guess so restricted that I can't even list uh, uh, what, it, what it is. And uh, I don't know if I have, do I have HPLA? No, I don't, there's no um, highly privileged list ACL. But it, it's, it's basically just for you. And if you need a temporary spot, you put it in here and you can use it and you're guaranteed that it's going to go away when your process dies. So think of slash temp in a way that it really is just for you and it clears out automatically. But in some ways, this is really, you know, here you have, this is this process, here's your stack. Your stack is here. I do status, stack four, and you see everything um, on it. Let me do dash A for stack four, all the status things. And you see it's a segment, which is, it's a piece of memory. Just like, you know, 80, 386 has had segments. This is a segment on Multics. The and segment is a file, and a file is a segment. Yeah, yeah. modulo MSA. Yes. And that's why it's a stack. And that's why it's a stack. Wait, but don't we know what a stack is? We know people know what a yeah, stack is. Yeah, you can call it a stack. Yes. Yes. 
And what was, what, what was it, Sam, that you were going to ask? Uh, I believe 18 bits of, of words, 36-bit words. So that's so 2 to the 20th. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's nine bit bytes. Yes. So it wasn't ASCII. No, it was ASCII. It was nine bit ASCII. Yes. Yes. But he, he, here's one thing. Um, here I have the stack. Let me just, I'm going to delete the stack. And I get a fatal error. Process is terminated. Improper access on user stack. So I, I deleted the stack out from under me. Uh, I now have a new process because the, the you know, supervisor of the answering service found, saw that something really bad happened to my process, created me a new one. Um, I can do a status dash A on stack one, um, which is a root ring one stack with ring brackets. And this is, you know, most pro modern processes have ring brackets in there. They don't quite make the same use of it like Multics did. Uh, Ring one was mostly for like um, send me for messaging. So when I when I use um, you know if if John is here and I send mail to it, it uses the Ring one to to write to get to his mailbox um, and make use of that. Um, so, the, you know, Multics had three different things for security. You had access control lists, you had ring brackets, and then you had something called AIM, which was like military style um, security. So you could have secret, top secret. Multics was one of the few systems that they want, allowed secret and top secret to exist on the same system because they had special rules so that no information could go from top, top secret to secret, and they had to close all sorts of um, leaks in terms of, um, in terms of um, covert channels uh, on that thing. Yeah, I can, oh yeah, I can try to delete stack one, and it won't let me because I don't have access to it. Yes. I would have to be in ring one in order to del delete it, yes. No, not quite yet. I mean, let me just go through a little bit of programming first, uh, just to get you a sense of it. Multics was written in PL1. Uh, this was a radical decision at the time because no operating system had had been written in a high-level language so, before. The, what? Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Can you compare the x86 and x 64 rings to the multics ring? Because, you know, at least for some grounding. The, the, the short the, answer is Intel screwed it up, so you don't yeah. The, 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 yeah, yes, Intel screwed a lot of things up. But no, no, okay. Intel attempted to copy the multics ring. They just didn't quite work right. Yeah. The, the, when Intel designed that architecture, they were expecting people to write multics like that ring so you can make use of it. Mm -hmm. But they did not. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's easy to make make mistakes. So I'm going to CWD. Uh, I have here um, a source directory. Uh, I have a few PL1 programs. Let me show you hello.pl1. Um, PL1 was, it was a language invented by IBM. It was the idea you take you want to merge Fortran and COBOL and everything else together into a systems programming language. And as you know, it's, prob it's probably simpler now than C++. It, it's simpler than C++ is now, but it was much more complicated than C. Yeah. Um, but one thing Multics did is it, um, you know, the systems programming threw out all of PL1IO. It threw out huge parts of the program of the programming language that you would ex be expected to use. So to, to right, exactly. So so you you know so here the hello hello there program is calling IO ASCII. Uh, that's sort of like the the predecessor to printf, including with up arrow A as opposed to percent S. Uh, here we have. Huh? 
Right, printf was a, a child of that. Um, and you have entry points for hello and h, because they, these are two ways to get into it, so that you could have a short name to it. So I can, um, I can run hello by saying hello. I could run hello by saying hello, entry point, hello. I could type in h, and I could also do hello, dollar sign, so h. So in those days, it was not considered dangerous to have the working directory in your search path. Correct, correct, because. You didn't type, you didn't type dot slash. Yes, because you have your, in your search rules initiated segments, yep. referencing dir, working dir, and then the system libraries. Um, initiated segments for people? Hmm? I'll, I'll show that when. Referencing yeah, referencing dir is sort of like you know where it comes from. But let's go into a, a program called Reverse um, rev.pl1. This was a nice program that we used to sort of teach. No, yeah, so yeah, you're right. Yep. I already, I have an a alias on my on on uh, uh, on uh, on my Unix too, because I always make that uh, I do that and VT100. Huh? Why does it Because I because uh, I didn't set set it um, to it. Um, and um, so here we have a. Pro I want a program that would reverse the contents of a file. And in, you know, the standard way in Unix, and I, I, I taught a class about this before, and the standard way in Unix to do this would be to, you know, maybe pipe it in and do, do reads and writes. But in Multics, every time you would access these segments, these files, as memory. And, you know, you can do this with a map on Unix but you almost never do. Nobody really, that's not the default way of accessing s files in Unix. In Multics, for the system program, it was. So you have PL1, you have lots of declares, um, you have, um, yeah, we have, it's, it's there, declared. Uh, CUR count, when you want it, command utilities, they're not passed in. Uh, quite the same way, um, you know, you, in terms of dealing with this variable uh, stuff, you use the CU command utilities. Uh, all the system routines and subroutines end it with an underscore. That's what you knew it was there. Uh, usage meth message, uh, which is useful. Getting the arg pointer to, you know, you, you all PL1 pass things by reference. Uh, so I was getting the arg pointer and arg length as a return, a code if, if, it, uh, if it didn't work out. Uh, I declared arg up here um, as a, okay, yep. The arguments actually were passed to the command, the real arg list, right. just as in Unix. Right. But there was no argc, argc thing, thing in PL1. You'd have to say the exact arguments if you got them wrong. Would then it would, be a, it would blow up. Right. Well, yeah. This, if if we had you know variable arguments, but I just want to show that declare arg, uh, care arg length base pointer. Basically, this when I refer to arg, it's based on arg pointer and arg length, um, so that that becomes the string there. And the other thing about multics is these. The, you always, once you got a path name, you call it expand path name and it'll break it up into the directory name and then into the uh, entry name. Right. And a number like eight zero seven 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 five that you could it, later it, use without knowing it. You could pass it around straight that message. It's amazing what you forgot. There are a lot of things in which didn't work out, but some things. Right. So and here is the big thing. This is initiate count. I give it the directory and the name and entry name, which had gotten expanded by expand path name. Uh, the bit count. Uh, is a return argument. Basic, uh, one thing is Multics uh, had the, 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 the size of a file done in terms of bits. 
Uh, if you wanted a, a nine-bit file, which is one byte, you could have that. If you wanted a one-bit file, you know, the bit count would actually allow for that. Um, you return the segment pointer, and it returned a code. Uh huh. So that's why set pointers set. Yeah, yep. It's not obvious you don't know. Right, I mentioned that we pass by reference, so these things get output. The bit count gets output, the seg pointer gets output. Um, actually, hold on a second. So, yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, C now does references. Um, and if it's a code and it's not code error, thing, I initiate. I, I turn the bit count into a byte count by divided by nine, and then I just say string equals reverse a string, and then I return. So this is the um, um, this is the return reverses the entire file. So I have uh, you know I I have uh, test.pl1 here, which is a copy of this program, and I say rev test.pl1, and then I print test.pl1, and there it is backwards. So, you know, they, all, every, every, every byte has been reversed. Uh, the first, no, the first line is at the back. It's been treated as just one large string. And, Exactly, because that's what, how, how it works. So we would use this at the Explorer post as sort of a way to, you know, to incentivize people since it's in some ways just a one line, you know, you, you set everything up and, um, and uh, you set everything up and the actual, the actual reversing is just a one liner. Um, we, Exactly, because the subroutine resists, we, I, we looked underneath PL1 operations to think if, did it do it byte by byte or a special instruction? No, it, it did create a copy of it and then move it and copy it back. We were a little disappointed in that. I mean, you could come up with your own routine. So I have one last, uh, but this illustrated how you know, this segment just got, got initiated into it and you can just access it as memory and that's one of the big powers of, of Multics is no it, right the segment. Statement. Huh? There was no write statement at the end. There was no write statement. No, no, no read statement. No read statement. No read statement. Traditional I.O. stuff on top if you wanted to. Need it, yes. But, but for actually accessing the content, this HCS underscore dollar initiate was the equivalent of opening a file. Right. It puts it into your address space. Yep. Uh, well, I, I, I don't. I think it's just because um, you know it, it was over designed. You had six bit bytes. Yeah, not a, you could you could deal with six bit bytes too, for that matter. Okay. I, I have one last program to show you, uh, just to talk about uh, dynamic linking, and um, and it's it's halfway.pl1, um, and I, hold on, let me just quit out of this and say uh, stty ttp vt100, and then emacs halfway.pl1, and uh, here let's say I'm writing a program. It's halfway to, uh, it, uh, it uh, I, I call, I want to call, have a routine called get string, and maybe I haven't written it yet, I, I know it's going to be returning 100 characters, and then I want to call it IOA, so I compile it, um, and I run it, and it, I get a linkage error through dynamic linking, because I don't have a get string. Uh, but I could go in, 
and I have in sub, I have a get string.pl1 and let me, I write it in and I, I do this, Multics is great, return it uh, and I will compile it um, and run it and I have get string now and I can uh, run the halfway program. Actually, no, what I can do is just start, which continues, and it gets a string. Um, and one other thing is you have, in Multics, you have these command line levels of a stack of commands. If you interrupt one, you can get another level. And um, I will say that that's sort of the, um, um, the big thing. I, the Multic simulator is up and running right now. Um, I've given, it can give you people accounts if they want to play with it. I'll keep it running until um, tomorrow, you know, or, is that, huh? Well, just because I think it uses CPU time and processes. I could leave it up. I know. Yeah, well, we're, we will, we're, well, we'll see. Well, that, that, if anybody wants to say, I've got the Twitter handle, at Multics. So even if it's worth saying that at Multics.org, there's someone else is running a Multics, which is available. A mash, yes. Um, with a JavaScript client, so uh -huh. you can go with your web browser and use Multics for free. Okay. You don't even need yep. to make accounts or SSH in. Could, could right. we extend a little bit into the brain to explain how this would Oh, it's not a great thing with a key signing party, so I mean, it's up to how. I think we should probably move on to that uh, pretty quickly. Is that in this room or somewhere else? It's in this room. Okay. Can I do get my key? Okay. So uh, this is a sense of it, you know, come to, you know, we can talk about accounts, whether we want to keep it up and running, all of that stuff, but. Um, it, it's been uh, it's been fun. I've never really had to administer a Multics before, like creating users like uh, like this. Uh, so it was a lot of time with the uh, uh, yeah EP for end of program. So yep. And how do we actually pay the money? <laughs> 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 Write me a check. I'll take care of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>Yeah, our, our next event is a PGP key signing party. Uh, we'll have more lectures at, at five, from five to seven and then dinner at seven just for a, a 